Samsung has taken the curtains off the Galaxy Note 9, and Apple has hit a trillion dollars in its valuation. That's right, a trillion, a trillion dollars. Yes, that's all coming up and more on the Scenic UK podcast, episode 542, for Saturday, the 11th of August. Hello and welcome to the show and joining me this week is a Drew Stern. Hi Drew. Hi Andy. You're feeling great aren't you? Amazing. Absolutely top notch. Fully healthy. Not full of cold and flu. Not and in the slightest. You're feeling good, your your voice doesn't sound bunged up nope. and you're not, you're not going to be sneezing. And I'm living my best life. That's good. I'm glad that you've waited till we have the hottest summer in a long time to have a cold. Uh, yeah but it's a common misconception that uh, a cold is actually related to temperature. All right, Captain. I know about the body, the human, the human body. For my un- own human unrelated body. issues, I'm now going to wipe my nose. Totally unrelated <laughs> issues. It's fine. Um, I mean, I can. Would it would it help if I wiped mine too in sympathy, and then at least it's both of us? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend using this though. Uh, no, I might. I might use something else. Usually, my shirt sleeve or my jeans or something. Yeah. Um, I'm that so. I'm basically. I might use your shirt sleeve in a minute. This oh, it's going to be. It's going to. It's going to be soaked. <laughs> Um, we are going to kick off with talking about the Galaxy Note 9. We talked about this quite a lot in the last podcast. You weren't on it, but trust me that we did. Um, but uh, this week, Samsung has actually officially taken the curtains off. Now, I say this week. The podcast is going out on Saturday, which is when you'll all be actually seeing it. The launch event is on the Thursday, but we're recording this on a Wednesday morning. So officially right now, it hasn't come out. But So you, the listener slash watcher, know more about this than we do. Well, no, we don't know don't know more. Um, we've had our briefings with Samsung, so we know about the phone. We will oh. usually hear about these things in advance so we can prepare our content to go live at the point where it becomes official. That's pretty much how the entire industry works. So we're works. C- going to covertly talk about stuff we're not allowed to now, even though... We are going to be talking about everything about the phone now, um, <sighs> but it's fine because... As I say, this is going. This will be on Saturday, and it's it will be out in its public knowledge then. So uh, there's a little little behind the scenes. It's like streaking in your bedroom. You. <laughs> it's exactly like streaking in your bedroom, which I do all the time, um, and I broadcast it because um, I'm odd. Anyway, um, I mean, we could be talking about this. And putting this out now because it's been one of those launches where it's been leaked all over the place. And in fact, Samsung itself leaked its own phone with this whole advertising spread about the phone, showing it, called it the Galaxy Note 9. So even before it was announced, we know that it's called the Note 9. We know that it looks basically identical to the previous Note, which we expected anyway. Um, not a lot of not a lot of big changes there, which we'll come on to. Um, so. It, there's been no surprises for this. Even even before we've had the launch, there's, there are no surprises, which is pretty typical with a lot of phones. But for it to come, like for a big high-profile leak from Samsung uh, themselves, is a little bit silly. Um, I don't I don't quite know what happens there. But I'm going to talk you through some of the major specs of the phone, Drew, and I'm going to see if any of these excite you. I can see you have got an iPhone over I there. I do, yeah. Although it looks like an iPhone seven seven. You need an upgrade. Uh, so the Note 9 is going to have a 6.4 inch. You're going to let that. You're going to let that one slide. My little jab at your phone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Yeah. You are ill. Normally you'd have you'd have hit back with no. Let me tell you why it's still great. But no. I. I honestly. I. Uh, I. I don't care. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. My. My phone is 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 as up to date as I need it to be. And the hardware differences are not enough for me to make the jump. And as long as the iOS is up to date, I'm all good. Well, you know what? That's actually the point that we're going to come on to shortly. So, but I'm going to take you through some of these specs. 6.4 inch screen, 2560 yeah. 1440 resolution. So it's a big yeah, screen, yeah. high resolution, as you'd expect from yeah. the Note series. Um, it's got a dual rear camera. Um, both have got optical image stabilization, and it's got the um, dual aperture main camera that we've seen on the Galaxy S9, which is kind of I've used it and it's it's fine. It it doesn't make a huge difference in low light. Kind of their point is oh it's now this low light master of photography. It's among the better cameras for low light. The best is still the Huawei P20 Pro. Um, that thing I took out and I'm genuinely astounded at what that phone can do in low light. So if that's your thing. You still need to be looking at Huawei for this. Um, it's got an 8 megapixel front camera, a big 4,000 milliamp battery, um, which has got their safety check so it doesn't explode. Milliamp hour battery. Milliamp an yeah. hour battery. Uh, Snapdragon 845, so top specs all around, huge amount of storage and RAM, 
um, fingerprint reader on the back, um, and it's um, IP68 water and dust resistant, including the S Pen. Um, and it also has a headphone jack, which is which is good. Samsung has stuck with um, sticking with the headphone jack on the S9, whereas most of its Android rivals and, of course, Apple have ditched that jack. Um, some interesting things, though, with it. It's got uh, water and uh, like a combination of water and carbon fiber cooling within the phone, which is which is which is pretty neat. Okay, um, and that's largely for water gaming. cooling. Water cooling, apparently. Now, uh, unless I'm sort of getting this wrong, and this may be one of those things that kind of after we have the launch, people are going to be commenting like, "What are you talking about? It's complete. It's not what it is." But as I understand it right now, as at the point of recording, there is a Water sort cool? of in water and carbon fiber cooling system within the phone to cool it for very intense things, i.e. gaming. Do they refer to it as water cooling or liquid cooling? Well, at the moment, I've I've got the word water. Now, presumably liquid of some kind, but I don't, I don't know okay, necessarily what that liquid is. Because I know, obviously, when you have like... When you have liquid cooled uh, desktop PCs, it's typically not water; it's a type of coolant, like it, similar to what you would have in a car, or some, you know, something. Water like that. doesn't actually transmit heat very, very well. So, um, water cooled engines on a car, for example, require mm -hmm. a radiator. The radiator yeah. actually facilitates the heat evaporating, and the water just transports it. If you're actually in a limited size like that, I would imagine with no using, fans. With no fans, uh, I imagine that they're using a some kind of of gel or liquid that yeah. that can move it away. Yeah. But you do require movement of that liquid for it to make sense. Which means which in the case of pump. parts, yeah, yeah, pumps and stuff. So um, I, I'd like to hear more about this. Yeah, I'd, li I'd like to know more. At, at the moment, unfortunately, you know, as we said, we are recording this early, so it's going it, to, it means that there are some of these details that I, I don't have a lot more information on. Um, but that is interesting, and it's really designed uh, for for keeping it cool for really intense things, which includes gaming, and uh, which is important for this phone because uh, this is going to be the first Android phone um, which will have Fortnite launching on it. Now, Fortnite, Drew, um, you, you probably are aware of, is the world's most popular game at the moment. It's an absolute sensation. There are it is insanely popular. Um, the big battle royale game, and so far that hasn't been on Android. Um, I believe it is on iOS, as is, um, is yeah. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Um, but it's going to be launching exclusively with some of Samsung's <laughs> most recent phones, including the S9, I believe, and the uh, and the Note 9, of course, um, uh, uh, exclusively from uh, the 9th of August, which with, means it's out now. So if you do have a, a Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, S8, and S7. Do go and have a look in the Samsung Game Store because I believe that is where you'll find Fortnite. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of neat that they've sort of done this this tie-in to try and get a little bit of excitement um, around it. Um, but I am, you're right. I, I'm very interested to know how this cooling system works yeah. and whether it actually does work because I think that is one of the issues they had with the battery on the Note Seven is that it basically it tried to charge too quickly and expanded and it got too hot. Um, there are all kinds of different reasons why they gave for it. So I think maybe this is part of that, that you can really kind of ramp up that power. Because often in, in gaming PCs, you will have water cooling in order to do what's called overclocking of your processor, where it goes more, it, it puts out more power than it's normally supposed to. But in doing so, it gets extremely hot. So you need to really, really, really cool it. Um, by using liquid and lots and lots of fans and sometimes huge blocks of ice, but only if you're kind of weird. <laughs> um, so some other other cool other cool features which we talked about last time um, that we, we've now got confirmed. Uh, the S Pen, that's a little stylus that comes in in the Note, um, does is now sort of Bluetooth compatible, and it um, you can actually use it for ver various things, including you can control um, like PowerPoint slides if you're using your Note professionally. Because again, Samsung are really targeting this phone as like a very high-end professional tool. So there's lots of talk about its compatibility with, um, uh, well, this with, with controlling PowerPoint and the whole DeX system where you can plug it, the, this phone into um, an HDMI um, monitor and use it as a use it as a fully fledged desktop PC if you want to. Um, you can also use the S Pen to use your camera. So if you want to set your camera up on a tripod or you know, use it for taking a selfie, you can click the, the pen and use that to take the photo, which could be kind of neat. I mean, for me, that's probably not something I would use very often, if at all. Um, it's, it's, not, you know, it's not a dissimilar function to how I can use uh, my Apple Watch to take a photo using my iPhone if I want to put my iPhone on a tripod. But 
I've never I, used I that don't think No, I don't think I've ever used it. Um, I think I used it once when I... Um, the only time I used it was actually to see the image on the phone, on my watch, when I was using my phone to record a uh, video of me on a phone mount inside a car. So I was pointing it at me, but because of the angle that when I was mounting the phone, I couldn't see how it was framed. I couldn't see whether I was right. in shot or not. So I basically, I used the screen on my watch to see, <laughs> he's off. Sorry. I used my, I used the screen on my watch to see how it was being framed. So I could do it that way. But obviously you can't do that with the S Pen. You can just use it to take the picture. So whether that is important or not, I don't know. But what I kind of want to get from you and even from me is like, do you think this is in any way exciting, this phone in general? Um, honestly, I think the, there's, there's a bit of a, a, a dual aiming of purpose because on the one side, if they're saying, oh, you know, you've got this little pen that you can use as you're advancing your PowerPoint presentation and plug mm. into an HDMI monitor. So on that really big business meeting that you've got coming up, yeah. we can, you know, this will plug in seamlessly and it will look cool and you'll feel cool. Yeah, also, efficiency. Yeah, also Fortnite. Yeah, which also, is a, which is a completely but, different audience. Presumably, it's for those business people who have got out of that big business and need to go and take an emergency poo, and then want, so <laughs> want to. Why spend, did you have to factor that in? Maybe just wanted to go off and relax somewhere. No, I needed to go and do it. I'm, I'm just. Is that where well, you play PUBG I'm and? Sure I understand. Uh, oh. <laughs> But my watch has been listening in. too. If you look at that, he's been listening to literally everything <laughs> I've just said, including go and have an emergency poo. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Apple Watch. I don't think that Siri is going to have a very unbiased opinion about the Note. No, uh, I think it may say no. Have you considered the iPhone? Yeah. Um, no, my, my only thought on that is that if you had a big business meeting, then maybe you're really nervous and and like kind of everything's up in the air and you probably don't feel like having one before the meeting because yeah. you're too nervous but then afterwards everything just comes flooding out um, and that is when you'd want to sit down for a good 45 minutes and play um, Fortnite so maybe there that's is... more of a snapshot into your mentality than it is an actual campaign for I promoting this I like to think that I am the everyman Drew and Fair if enough. I would do that then surely lots of other people yeah. would um, so that's but I, I completely agree with you you know that that is that is you know the case but then it's not just the note that's getting Fortnite exclusively it is the other no but you're, Samsung phones. you're talking about having an advanced cooling system specifically designed to cope with things like gaming it could also be for um for um like cad applications and things like that which people do use on the their note, on, the, on the really note. yeah but and that's kind of one of the, one of the benefits of having the stylus that you can sort of do quite advanced um uh things if you're on business uh, on building sites and you need to sort of use these quite demanding applications that you can um, that you can do that and, and again like would take up a lot of processing power and particularly if you are using the note as a desktop PC plugged in using the deck system you've got a mouse and keyboard attached and you are doing sometimes quite demanding work on that because the apps that you can get now for your phone are desktop class and so you're kind of going to need to have desktop yeah. class processing and therefore cooling so I think it's going to be interesting to see what you can use this phone for but the thing that, that I think is going to be difficult for Samsung with this phone is that it looks identical to the previous one everything which is not necessarily bad because the last phone was good looking and, and stuff but it's there's been no physical change and that was the case with the S9 looking the same as the S8 and sales of the S9 have been Samsung themselves have described them as slow um, and in fact Samsung has lost quite a significant market share um, in the mobile world because of those slow sales like people just haven't been that interested and analysts have been saying that that is the, the, the reason why people haven't been that excited about these phones is because there is no major upgrade there's no reason for people who have got the S8 and even the S7 to be thinking okay I'm going to upgrade and get this this new phone there's no visual change to be excited about yeah there's a bit of a yeah the, the camera with its dual aperture thing was pretty much the the main upgrade and even that isn't that big a deal um yeah it had the slow motion camera but there are other phones that have got that including like sony's phone which even does it as a high res higher resolution so there's no big exciting feature for people to latch onto and to think that is now the phone i want to get and well, isn't that the same how Apple's done it in alternate years where we've had the, the model and then the S where it, it's very superficial, uh, if any, changes to the exterior whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it's alternate years where you see a big design leap forward. It, it, it does tend to be. That's right. And, and Samsung, uh, sorry, and Apple have been um, sort of 
criticised on some years for repeating design um, language too often and therefore it not seeing like a an interesting thing. But but analysts have, and this is analysts speaking, not just me, um, they do often see Apple as its own beast within you know within the industry in that it is one of those companies that can kind of churn out minor upgrades to something and it will still sell extremely well and the iphone x <coughs> has sold extremely well despite its very high price and other companies have tried to put high prices on phones and they haven't um they've been <laughs> criticized um very widely for being too expensive and the argument of well apple's phones are expensive doesn't really work because apple can do that and and that is what the what the market has shown so it's it's I, I, the argument from from these analysts and from the market generally it has really been that well actually no Samsung can't really get away with kind of repeating the same thing um, too many years in a row you know one year and then the next fine but the note hasn't really seen as a big uh, a big change and it's it's largely just sort of here's some new tech great tech and you know this tech is all the best tech you can pretty much get in a phone yeah but it's not really it's it, there's not one thing that's making anyone go, oh, yes, that is the interesting thing I want. That's the thing that's going to make me. I, I don't think having u using your S Pen to be able to move through PowerPoint slides is a compelling it's a reason to that want you'll to. use once, maybe. No, you, you, it's, you are, it's not an exciting feature. If you are a professional who does PowerPoint presentations, I guarantee you, you've already got that down. You've got your yeah, workflow you, that you like to use, and you're going to stick to it. You're not going to change it just because you got a new phone, because you don't want to go into that first meeting, be using it for the first time. Yeah, you'd have to take it home and practice. And why change it if you've already got something that you're you can rely on? So yeah. it is it is a novelty. Absolutely, um, it, it is a bit. And, and I also suspect that some of those people. I mean, maybe Samsung's in their research and they know people do want this, but I don't know really how many people are doing PowerPoints directly uh, from their phone. Uh, PowerPoints are so 2007 they anyway. Are, they are, yeah. Um, but it, it is interesting to see kind of how Samsung is playing the no, and it's going to be very interesting to see what it does with the next um, S phone, the S10 or whatever it goes for, um, which we expect to be around the February time, because it was um, this week or last week that Apple hit a valuation of a trillion dollars. So Apple's just going quick fire. How many zeros in a trillion? Twelve. Oh, I knew. <laughs> I did because I've got it here and I counted them and I counted them before we came on. Just it's usually I was, a question I was that gonna... stumps people because you go, how many zeros in a trillion? You go, uh... yeah, it's it's twelve. It's a ridiculous number. Um, it's a million millions. It is a, it's a million millions? Yeah, it's absolutely a bonkers amount of money. Um, but basically, what happened is Apple stock hit two hundred and seven dollars and five cents a share. Um, and that's because, and it had four billion eight hundred twenty nine million nine hundred twenty six thousand shares. Um, so each each of those shares had to hit two hundred seven dollars to be worth a trillion dollars overall, which did happen. Um, uh, it closed on Thursday, the last Thursday's trading session closed at um, at two hundred seven dollars and thirty nine cents, um, which makes it the first US public company to hit that level, which is a big deal. Um, Tim Cook said in a memo to Apple employees, he called the valuation a significant milestone, but added that it wasn't the most important measure of the company's success. Financial returns are simply the result of Apple's innovation, putting our products and customers first, and always staying true to our values. Um, he went on to talk about Steve, saying that Steve founded, Steve founded Apple on the belief that the power of human creativity can solve even the biggest challenges and that the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Which is which is quite nice. Which Steve is he talking about? Well, Steve Jobs. Well, there's two Steves who started Apple. I'm assuming he meant Steve Jobs. Fairly I right. think we can all assume he meant Steve Jobs. <laughs> he may well have said Steve Jobs. I'm being facetious, there. yes, I'm yeah. pretty sure he did. Yeah. Um, so that that's interesting that you know Apple has had its success with the iPhone X being so expensive and it's expected to announce uh, three new iPhones in this September. We'll have a possibility of a considerably larger version of the iPhone X um, and another version called the two. iPad. <laughs> yes, called the iPad <laughs> and another that's significantly less expensive. Um, so they've tried that before though. Has that ever really worked? The iPhone five like with the five C, yeah, you know, the cheaper plastic ones. 
You know, I don't know. I mean, they they don't have a new 5C at the moment, so you'd guess that no, it didn't work. But man, I saw a lot of those things out in a while. I feel like I did like, see a they lot. Were, they seemed to sell, as far as I could see from my own eyes, incredibly well. I mean, Apple doesn't give that specific figures on how mm. well things are selling. So, it but is, the fact they didn't that continue that trend of lower priced models seems to suggest that it wasn't as successful. Well, I mean, they've sort of replaced it with the iPhone SE. Which is the basically is the iPhone five, the regular five, the metal one, but with updated specs. And we do have, you know, so we, and they have continued to update the iPhone SE. So that is there. Mm. If you want an affordable iPhone, you go for the SE. That's what you get. Um, affordable. This is I'm, it. Well, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it's affordable compared to the other ones, and certainly when you compare yeah, when you, it to when you the make iPhone your top 10, end over a thousand dollars, then everything else seems everything affordable. Else, yeah, um, but it's you know, and that's a good phone. It's also the phone that I often tell people to go for when they say, "Oh yeah, I really want a, an iPhone, but I want a smaller one. I don't want something that's so big." And because it is still this exactly the same footprint as, as the iPhone five, which are which is now when you hold it, feels really small. Really small. Yeah. Yeah. I, fours I, and fives now at the time felt like, oh, this is a good size screen. And now you look at it, you're like, oh man, I'm, yeah. I, I miss that extra inch. Yeah. It's it's bonkers. And particularly, I mean, that's the case with what's going to be with the Note nine because that's six point four inches. And I remember when the first Note launched, and how how big was Galaxy Note size? The um, first one. I should know. You'd think I'd know this off the top of my head. Yeah. The the first. Note, um, Galaxy Note series, blah blah blah. Galaxy Note, the first one, five point three inch, yeah, which is Modest. smaller than almost every flagship phone at the moment. Yeah, um, and at the time that was laughably huge. You know, people we, people made videos of like people using them in public transport, holding them to their heads, looking like idiots. Tom Jolly, huge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, with these massive, massive phones and. And now we've got six point four inch phones, yeah. and it, it's it, and and that seems normal. Like we don't really bat an eyelid at this. I mean, yeah, okay, fine, it's still a big phone. And so here we've got the um, Pixel Two XL, and that is again, it's a big phone, but it doesn't look silly anymore in the way it once did. It's weird how trends for that kind of thing mm. change. I mean, I remember when phones were getting smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller and smaller to the point you where they swallow were... swallow them, basically. Yeah, because yeah. The, the screens didn't need to have much functionality. This was before most of them were even color anyway. They weren't certainly weren't used for imaging or multi, mm. multi um, uh, MMSs. Um, so you could make them small. Small was cool. Small was functional. Yeah. And then when you start getting smartphones, obviously bigger actually has a use. It has a practicality yeah, to absolutely. it. Absolutely. And now it's pretty much what size do you want? Because you can dial in exactly the kind of size that you want in a phone you and can. find one that's that size. Yeah, and most of the, even the companies, if you want a particular phone, they do tend to offer two versions. With Samsung, you've got the S9, the S9 Plus, iPhone, you've got eight, eight plus, and then ten if you want if you want that. Huawei P20 Pro or P20. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, Pixel, Pixel, and Pixel XL. Yeah. So I, I think pretty much across the board, any brand you want, there is that choice there, which is good. I mean, you still, so you still got a smaller phone. You've got the seven, not the yeah. seven plus, and that, and that is fine. That's fine for you. I've got um, the larger uh, Apple Watch, the seven iPhone, an iPad Mini, a regular iPad, an iPad Pro. I feel like I've got enough ranges of screens from my Apple devices. I didn't need the slightly larger phone to go between my so iPhone and my uh, iPad Mini. You're responsible for quite a significant chunk of that one trillion dollar budget, then, aren't you? If you've got all those things, I would hate to think how much money I've passed to the Apple Corporation. Do you have years. the HomePod? I do not know. So actually, because I did want to mention, because I've recently uh, got, because I, I had the HomePod when it first came out, and they, I've recently got a second one, because when they launched, uh, updated iOS um, to include AirPlay 2, you can have um, a stereo pair. And it's amazing. Like, it really it sounds so good having, because the, the sound from the HomePod already is really, considering it's, it's, you know, it's the size of, I don't know, what's that? What's that size? 10 inches or so? 12 inches? Is that? I yeah. don't know tall it's not very big it's a small speaker it puts out one hell of a good sound yeah. if you put it on your, the floor in your living room it gives really, really amazing yeah. bass but how much does it cost oh, it's like 350 quid and two of them well, takes seven, you over 700 700 quid yeah and for 700 quid what can you get in terms of amp and speakers that you could plug into uh like an amazon echo not that much i wouldn't you, think you could Not get some, you could get some pretty serious speakers could, and a good amp take optical out from uh from but yeah but then yeah but you're talking about 
I, everything's got to be in the, okay, yeah, now optical out, and you've got to get the right cables, and you've got to do this, and you've got to connect to this, and will it be compatible with this thing, and all that stuff that kind of, yeah. when you have the Apple thing, you know, but I've just got two plugged in, and then I just AirPlay from my phone, and it puts it to both, I and I've got one in one corner of my living room, and one in the other corner, both on the floor, so because it's hardwood floor, so the base fires into the floor. And your and neighbors you get, below. No, 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 I'm on ground floor. Okay. My neighbors above me are noisy as hell, and I hate them. Um, <laughs> Uh, absolutely, they do my head in. Just want to get that out there in case they watch. Stop it. Just stop. This is very passive aggressive. You, you could just oh. knock on the door. Oh, they've told, I've told them. As, this, is a, this is a whole other issue <laughs> we're getting into. Um, but yeah, the sound is great from these two speakers. Um, and, and obviously, then you can have the multi room if you want. Um, but I like having them in one room and just sort of really sort of pumping up that sound. It, I mean, do you not see there's being some irony in spending a lot of money on high quality speakers and then streaming audio to audio to them over Bluetooth? Well, it's AirPlay and it's over. Well, it's AirPlay, so it's still, but the, it's the still quali- over the Wi-Fi. It's, it's, like, it's, it's over CD quality. Is it yeah. the, the the quality that you can get across there? Because it's not Bluetooth, I guess you're right. Well, AirPlay, also, yeah. also I, I think recent Bluetooth, like they they are, I don't know exactly what bit rate it can it can put out, but it's it's pretty much up there with. I mean, you know, fine. If you're talking audio file levels where you've got 200 pound a foot cabling and you're using it at like mastered level lossless quality, then pro- into a pair of 20 grand speakers, then fine. Maybe you could tell a difference. But I think for, for 99% of people's home audio needs, I don't think you can tell any difference. Like Bluetooth is really good. I mean, you use Bluetooth headphones now. I do, yeah. In fact, you use Apple AirPods. <laughs> you've given, I do. Yeah. You've given Apple more money there. And I don't like the, the AirPods but only because they don't stay in my ear. That, I think, is the number one complaint people have about them because yeah. there's no variant in, in what size they are. They either do or they don't. And if they fit in your ear, they're they're great. Yeah. And if they don't, well, then they're terrible. And it's bad, which is a shame because they'd be the ideal headphones for jogging because they're so small and light. But I I mean, I, when I, I, when I had jog. a pair, I, I, well, I don't jog, no. But when I went out for a, even, even a brisk walk, which I do a lot of, um, they fell out. And I had, a, yeah. not, not these ones, but I had a different pair, which I won't name. Um, but and they also didn't have a very good fit, and they uh, one of them fell out and then went down a drain. So because because they're individual, they're not I was, going to buy a cable. I was really worried about that with the with the AirPods, and I, I I was quite proud of this. I got the first batch that came to the UK. Yeah. Um. So before did. before anyone else did, I got the the first set because I got in there early. And touch wood, I've never fallen out of my ears. And I've got the same pair that I've had since they first launched. What eighteen months ago? I'm fishing around my pockets because I use. Here we go. The Jaybird Freedoms, which I've talked about on the podcast before, I won't go into. You, I had but an older are, pair of Jaybirds, which I loved before. Yeah, these AirPods. are really, really good. I love the sound on these things, and although I have managed to tangle them hideously in my pocket. See, that, that already is, is, is no, a no. reason for the AirPods. But it's, it's, it's easy, and they just hang around my neck yeah, like that. They're so easy, so simple, so lightweight. The sound is decent. I get about five, six hours of battery life, and, and they charge in about half an hour. 40 minutes maybe or so and because they've they are connected by the cable they can hang around my neck and if one falls out it just goes yeah. here it doesn't fall to the yeah. ground which no. i wouldn't want like so th- for running i wouldn't want to use anything that isn't connected by a, a neck band to some degree no i i completely agree but the, I, I i don't know whether whoever modeled the ears that they built the airpods on has remarkably similar ears to me because they sit perfectly flush down my face they sit snug without being too tight and they never fall out but I know loads of people. I, I, you see them sometimes on the tube where people they have them almost sticking out like this. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't it's put like rams them basically They've got inside like, their no, skull. I'm go- I've spent all this money on these headphones. I'm gonna use them. I don't yeah. care if it looks silly, if it hurts. Well, but. you can get. Um, there are companies now that offer like moldings that you can put on them. That will yeah, but that, that's only if they're too small for your ear. If they're already too big to fit in your ear, a molding's not gonna help you get it in no, your ear. No, although maybe there's ones that you know they have like if if you have a molding that also has like a flange tip so that it yeah, will actually then, that sticks now it in. it's proud. They've been designed to sit inside yeah. your ear in a certain way because now they're going to be sat flush out and it's it's, it's going to be That's one of the still. things that's rumoured when they update them for the next the next pair that they will have like moulded in-ear tips rather than um, just the standard. Yeah, but moulded to whose ear? Well, maybe maybe it'll be maybe it'll be changeable. Well, that doesn't sound very Apple, does it? Um, we have gone a little bit off topic as we as we're talking about Apple generally, um, but but it goes to show how many different products they put out there that all kind of tie into not only a, a an ecosystem that people like to stick within, but also a lifestyle that uh, that people like 
live up to that goes beyond the quality of the product really is is more of a, a fashion statement than anything it else. totally is yeah it, and it they is. tap into that more than any other technology company. absolutely yeah there is a, there is a there is a, a certain feel that people have about sort of having like the, the latest iphone out in public and using it on the tube and having the airpods in than pe that people don't have it's, it's about the having default. like the latest huawei phone yeah I mean, like, which is a shame because huawei's the p20 pro is brilliant it's a great 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 phone um but no one would really care about seeing it apart from its cool color scheme but if you've got it in a case and no one no one's going to look at that phone and go oh that's that's really interesting what have you got there yeah third party shops like carriers or, or or phone shops aren't going to have posters of that phone outside when they can have posters of the latest iphone mm. and the deals that go along with yeah. it you know it doesn't bring boots in the door yeah the s the s9 is is the closest that you'll get to that but even then samsung has as we said found that the sales have, have really slowed of its phone it's taken a market share hit and um, it, it's going to need to do something pretty interesting because I, I think how the Note sells will be interesting to see because it hasn't really done much of an upgrade. It's it's is if you've got a Note eight, absolutely, there's no reason to upgrade. Um, if you've got a Note seven, send it back because you should have done already. I think they've, I think they have actually <laughs> if bricked Note them all seven, now. Get out the house. Get yeah, out run, now. Run, run from it. Yeah, just hurl it into the nearest river. Um, you can't fly with it. You can't take it in a no, car. Yeah, like, it's. it's um, uh, but like just owning one feels like a like an offensive act. Just if, if well, I think Samsung the put them out. I think they bricked them. So I think like I, don't, I think if you've got them, I don't know if you can still use them. Let me know if that is different. If there's anyone listening to the podcast who does still have a Note Seven and you're using it, let us know. And yeah. more importantly, let us know why, because you could have sent it back and had a replacement. But so you, you don't you don't fly as much as I do. I, I try not I, to ever fly. I, I fly a huge amount, um, but. You, you may or may not be aware of this, the paranoia about that phone on flights for yeah. so long. That is the only time I've ever heard a specific piece of hardware name checked on yeah. flights. If you have this phone, yeah. take it out, do not fly you with not it. not flying yeah. with this phone, yeah. Yeah, just the, the, not even paranoia, just the concern and the, 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 the bad press that that got. I mean, it, I don't know how much of that echoes through time and how much people are just shying away from something. I'm amazed they didn't discontinue the line's name at the very least. I actually am as well. But I think they handled it very well. It is, and we've, we've talked about this before, I won't go into this in, into detail, but Samsung did a good job of managing that situation. They were very, very transparent about how widespread the problem was. They talked, they talked openly about um, how they were trying to combat this how they were doing the research to find exactly what's gone on because they didn't know at first like they didn't know what had happened they were trying to contact the people who had had these fires to get their handsets to study them to see what it is that had happened because until they kind of break them down and do the post-mortems they can't find out what part has gone wrong it's not like they know in advance they don't make the phone and go oh yeah it's probably going to catch fire for this reason but sod it we'll put it out anyway because you know Samsung can't afford to make those sorts of like risks. So it needs to kind of work out what it is that's happened. And it turned out that it was like the issue with fast charging the battery. Um, but it handled it well. It, it did the recalls. It did everything that it should. And I think as a result, it, it sort of mitigated the overall damage to the Samsung brand name and the Note brand name. Yeah, but the Note, th the, the, the Samsung brand name was important for them to make sure that, that the brand name wasn't tainted. But they could have just changed the name of the line. I mean, did they still feel they had so much goodwill prior to the Note 7 that keeping it was a good idea? I mean, it's not even that it's that good a name. I think that, I think the other thing is, like, what would be the point? Because everyone knows that it, whatever phone it is, is just the replacement of the Note and would immediately be discussed in all the media as here's the replacement to the note line that, that exploded lasted, that would have lasted one cycle of uh, uh, i think we're still talking about it now even though it was two generations we are ago. but i think general but a lot of the a lot of the discussion probably won't be and i think maybe the next generation the note 10 probably won't be talked about at all because the note 8's been fine the note 9 presumably will be fine um so we'll just have to see how it goes but we are talking about mobile a lot which is good because it's a very mobile focused show this week um because the other thing that's happened is that Android Pi, it's the new version of Android, Android version 9 Pi, is officially rolling out um, to devices now. Um, starting, of course, with uh, Google's own line of Pixel phones, um, which is why I have the Pixel 2 XL here, because I have been trying to um, update this one. Uh, at the moment, it's got so many, because I haven't turned this on basically since it came out, because we did a couple of camera tests. Um, I didn't review this phone. 
so I haven't really had to use it. So it's got to do all these other updates first. So right now, I can't say for certain whether it's on my Pixel XL, but I have this morning texted two of my friends who have Pixels, uh, the, the first gen Pixels, both of whom confirmed that the update is available for them on their UK handset. So presumably then it has gone out, and if you do have a Pixel phone in the UK or Pixel 2, uh, then do have a look because it will be out. Um, but it does have a bunch of updates, which I want to kind of talk about, some of the more important updates on it. Um, the first thing is that it has this apparently much better adaptive battery feature that you that learns the apps that you use over time to prioritize resources for them. Um, so it knows that you know if you if you always are going in and out of Gmail and WhatsApp, that those are the things that it will need to sort of prioritize, sort of having like push email on and all this sort of stuff. The apps that you hardly ever use basically will ignore them until you open them. So it's trying to really cleverly use background tasks for your, you know, the processing power and therefore battery life, which is something that they've talked about before. Um, and other phones have apparently you've had similar features. I know Huawei has had a feature that apparently does similar things, but none of them have really hmm. seemed to make that big a deal, largely because with every generation they put in more demanding processors, more demands on the battery. So overall, if that smart software makes any difference, it's negated by more power-hungry other things. So overall, we still have smartphones which every single one, if you use them normally, you will have to charge every night because that's just how you use a smartphone. You might get into the next morning. You may be able to sort of, if you go out, on a Saturday night and stay at your mates and you don't charge your phone, you may have enough power to listen to music on your bus ride home, but then you'll need to put it on charge. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. So that's... I'm so, going to look forward to seeing how that really works. So dynamically switching off things like background refresh on the apps that it deems that you haven't been using as much as... But... But the whole point of something with background refresh is that it provides... It's not you necessarily with... background refresh. It, right. It's more just about how it's using... And again, you know... the we could probably talk for hours about like you know if we got the technical detail on this it's not it's not stopping things like you know if you've got i don't know you use a messaging service like viber which maybe you've got two people you talk to on it but you only ever use whatsapp and so you've you've opened viber once in the last month and so it will deem that low priority i think the idea is that you will still get push notifications if something happens but it's it changed the interval like the monitoring interval quite possibly yeah. or I, I don't know how exactly it will do that um but G google will probably be able to tell you a lot more um but that's the kind of the idea behind it and and things like i don't know maybe like auto updates on games i, I don't know like it's one of those things that we kind of need to use it a lot now it's out to really kind of get a handle on how that works and whether that makes much difference um but some other things we've got navigation gestures um so instead of having um on android you have the home button and then you have a back button and you have a multitasking button that is now a just one dot like a little pill shaped dot um and you sort of you can swipe left to go back you can swipe right to open your multitasking you can swipe down or up i think to to go home um a little bit similar to um how we've got with the iphone 10 with no home button so you've got to swipe to use gestures to get around um, that will be optional if you do want to have your usual things that you can put those on notifications will have the ability to show images in those notification previews instead of just text or um, which hopefully will make your notifications just that bit more useful um, although that is a feature that developers will have to build into their own apps so you may not see it straight away. Um, there's a, a proper do not disturb tool that can block calls, notifications, and even stop the screen lighting up at all while you've got it on. So if you really want to kind of have some phone downtime, then you can do that. Um, the software has a new look overall, um, generally sort of like rounded corners and notifications. Um, there's a quick settings panel that's changed. There's a better text selecting box that when you try and select text it will actually give a magnification box which we've had on ios it's finally something that we've got on um uh on android um we've also got vertical stacking of app previews when you go into the multitasking wheel again it's like iphone um and various changes like the settings menu and we've got things like app actions where when you see the apps in the app tray if there's a certain action that you always do you will see that suggested underneath so you can automatically launch into that 
action. So say it's composed message or maybe composed yeah. message or even I think um, one of the examples that that we've written about if you want to open Slack and go to a certain messaging channel straight away that you can automatically go into that channel. Um, and 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 new things like um, different a uh, new way of doing like screenshots it'll automatically allow you to edit them on the go. So it's again you know we're not talking huge upgrades if there's no particular tool um, or particular thing that overhauls the interface it's lots of just neat little tweaks and there are there are plenty of other behind the scenes tweaks these are some of the sort of the particular ones that I've, that I've picked out um, but I think just makes it that bit neater to use I already am a big fan of Android um, I do use it on my second phone as, as well as use my iPhone um, and I think it's much better these days than it was um, even just a couple of years ago they've made some good tweaks that makes it a much nicer tool to use um, it's much easier to use particularly Google's efforts to make stock Android um, very user-friendly I think have been great and so when I've suggested to people who when I've asked about okay I got someone who's not very tech friendly maybe it's an older relative um, that actually some of any phone that's running stock Android um, is often a really good one to go for because it is much more stripped back and easy to use. But of course, then you've still got the case where manufacturers themselves are putting quite complicated skins over the top. I think the worst one for me is still Sony. They do a lot to Android and it makes it a bit clunky to use. And it mean, also means that they pro the, their phones probably won't get Android 9 Pie for a while because they've got to do so much work to it in order to make it roll out. Samsung often does quite a lot too, but um, and, it, and it was the worst offender for making their phones insanely so much complicated. Bloatware. So much bloatware. So much bloatware, so much S Note, S Voice, S Things, all this stuff. I think it was the S Galaxy S5 which was the worst offender for this, and we really slammed it. I slammed it in particular for just being so insanely complicated that every, you expect a tool to be here and it's not it's hidden away in some sub menu somewhere else and it's a nightmare to get around everything takes about five or six more clicks than it should do um, they really kind of learned from that and, and made to, made big efforts to simplify the experience and I think they've done but a good job not so much as stripping down to raw Android which we by no means have they gone to raw Android it's still there's a lot of things that are very customizable um, and there are they have a phone that has a lot of tools you know they have all the different ways of doing it and they've got those um, you know, particularly on the note line as well, you've got so many other features. You've got like the, the note panel for that you, that you can sort of pull in on the right hand side of the screen with the with the with the face dots and all this that where you can automatically have favorite contacts saved so you can quickly yeah. do things. I guess you can appreciate the extra additions to the the raw Android platform when they are hardware specific and optimize the tools that the physical tools that you have at your disposal. Ab um, yeah, rather um, than just bloating it out with default brand based software. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if if there, if, there, if they've got a particular hardware thing, then then that makes use of that tool, then fine. Um, but that did not used to be the case with Samsung. They are sort of using things that are a bit more important now. Um, but I think this is interesting. I mean, you. Obviously, as we've talked about, you are quite an, uh, an Apple user. I'm not going to say fanboy because I, I think that generally you are uh, I'm, I'm, uh, reasonably agnostic. You're I, not. I've I've switched back and forth in the past, yeah. and I just happen to have stuck with iOS for the last five or six years. Is there anything that would make you switch? Honestly, um, talking about kind of like the walled garden, like once you're in and you're using the cooperation between uh, hardware devices, so without even really noticing how mm. I rely on the fact that my notes sync across my devices and that yeah. I can find every device from every other device. You've got quite a lot of smart home stuff too, don't yeah. you? So I, I mean, I is, that, is that that's linked with... Um, so I don't use HomeKit as much. Um, I It's kind of a loose association. So I use, uh, I use just the built-in app. So I have, I think I have about 50 Philips Hue bulbs around my home. Um, you got fifty now. Yeah, I just got a whole bunch more for the garden. <laughs> like, Expensive. Yeah, it's it's pretty pricey. Um, and that can be controlled through my uh, Amazon Echo as well, so I can do okay. voice commands that that tap into that. So it's kind of a loose association of. Do you say? Uh, Echo or no? What do you say? Alexa, Alexa. Uh, we've changed it to romance Echo. mode, and then everything sort of goes like. A no, soft red. I've changed it so I can like say brothel. I can say echo and then I and it turns off a light. Oh, that's quite neat. <laughs> yeah, it just makes it feel a little bit more human. Um, the so yeah, I don't. Obviously, Apple don't do 
um, every kind of smart device. So uh, they don't do like a smart home doorbell. So I've got that that ties into uh, different devices. Um, so there's there's a couple of different smart networks that I use, but sure. everything does play together relatively nicely. And Apple, if Apple did versions of those products, I'd maybe consider them. But at the moment, the the as far as my phone is concerned, mm. because that is so much, excuse me, because that is so much ties into your day to day work um, and communication. Mm. Having that um, sync with uh, like my photos syncing with my other iOS devices, so yeah. that I can get my uh, my photos that I take on my iPhone up here on my um, on my Mac uh, seamlessly. I wouldn't now want to take one of my devices out of that. So that's the same sure. reason that I wouldn't consider a Windows laptop. The same reason I wouldn't at the moment consider an Android phone. I mean, that and that's part of this big steel trap that you find yourself in. Yeah, absolutely. Because you, you, you're not stuck within it, but leaving it on one of those fronts would be so inconvenient. Mm -hmm. You'd have to change all your devices at once, which would be prohibitively expensive. Yeah. So every time you update one, it just seems like, ah, no, yes, there is a great Android alternative available, but even though it might not have all the latest little features and not the, the best hardware it just it, it would make such a big part of what I do on a day to day basis too difficult and and slightly more tricky that it's just easier for me to stick in this. Yeah, I think that's the case for a lot of people. Once you bought one, then you buy the other, and uh, you know, then you, like I've got Apple TV, so I want to you know an, an Apple Watch, which I like having. I like having an Apple Watch. Um, I like I don't use a lot of things, but for notifications, it's great. Um, and so I don't really want to. I can't really switch out. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I Apple use it as I say, well, I have yeah. a second phone, and it's always an Android phone, and it's usually something that I'm like reviewing or long term testing. So at the moment, I'm using the um, S9 Plus still. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm always using Android phones, but they are off, they are my second phone. They're not the phone that I'm, I absolutely rely on all the time. Um, and I think that's probably the case for a lot of people. Um, but definitely, it's something that I am interested in hearing about. And so if you do have. Uh, a particular allegiance, and for a particular reason other than you've just spent a lot of money on iOS apps, then uh, it would be good to hear about. Um, and so of course, that's another thing, of course, is that you're invested in terms of how much you've spent tons on of money. the apps. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All, all the apps, like I've spent hundreds and hundreds of pounds, like, particularly a lot of the games yeah. um, that I'm playing on, like my iPad, when I spend like 15 quid every time um, Square Enix launches a new Final Fantasy on iOS, and I immediately buy it, despite the fact that I bought it. 10 times on different platforms before that. Still waiting on Final Fantasy VIII, though. Still no sign of... They've done seven. They've done nine, um, which are great games, no question. But Final Fantasy VIII is, I think, my favorite Final Fantasy game, and they still haven't brought that out. So I'm furious. They need to do that. Anyway, that's another... I've never that. played a Final Fantasy game. And that's where we end, so I can go and kill Drew. Because I'm not a nerd. Oh, you are the <laughs> worst type of person. Well, that is time to wrap up. Um, do let us know if you have any thoughts um, on any of the topics today, um, on your thoughts on the Galaxy Note 9, whether you think that Samsung has done enough to stay ahead of the competition, and whether you think Apple's valuation of a trillion dollars is how, if it's really earned it. Um, I would say it has. I mean, it's got it, so it must have earned well, it. It's, it. It has that value because people are willing to pay that money for shares. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's the only reason that's it has the only that reason value. Has that value. Yeah. Um, Drew, uh, yes. why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're up to? Um, well, as, al coming up. Uh, as always, we're on the, the Carfection channels. And if, in fact, you're listening to this as a podcast, I recommend that you listen to our new Carfection podcast. If, his own podcast. If you are, yeah, of course. If you are interested in the world of cars and specifically anything that's fast, expensive, exciting, or just, you know, plain fun. Um, it, wherever you get your podcast to search for Carfection for the Love of Cars podcast. Is uh, it audio or is it video? It is audio podcast um, that goes out every week uh, uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, wherever you get your nice. uh, podcast from. Never had me as a guest on yours. That's fine. No, that's I've fine. had you on mine many times. But yep, but uh, I, I would argue that fine. I probably know more about technology than you do about cars. I know how to drive cars. Yes. It's all, sort of. I, so, I, I sort of know how to drive cars. Okay. Um, well, as soon as you form a, a, an opinion about the new Milan Red hypercar out of Austria or anything like that, let me know and we'll have you as a guest. Is that, is that a thing? Uh, yes, it's a yeah, I'm picking up thing. a uh, Porsche 17 Cayman GTS this afternoon. Yep. So it's a lovely car. There you go. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's very in, nice. It's red. Yeah. It's got black rims on it. Do you know what engine it has? It's got a four cylinder. It does, yeah. 
um, something, something. No, I don't, Drew. I don't. I don't know what engine it's got. It's an old boxer engine, isn't it? Uh, yeah, if you do know a little bit more, it's actually not. Um, oh, whatever. Uh, uh, <laughs> definitely, yeah. That's definitely. <laughs> that, that, they have. They put it. They specifically put that one in mine. Okay. So I'm definitely right. Um, no, but I recommend that if you are <laughs> if you are interested in cars, then uh, the Car Affection for the Love of Cars podcast is a is a brilliant place to go. And that is where, in fact, I'm going to be trying to record one for this Saturday. But last week's episode was a was a brilliant one with some uh, conversation about um, tits and other birds. Of course. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'm, I'm presuming you've got other videos and stuff coming up. You've just been out. You just got the one on the DBS. Yes, there's a great one coming out on the. By the time that you are listening or watching to this, the BMW i8 Roadster, mm-hmm. um, which our Henry Catchpole was out driving, which is, uh, as you are aware, we've driven the coupe version together on yes. a on a trip. Uh, is a BMW supercar hybrid that is great and it looks amazing as a Roadster. Um, which is a great feature on that. And there's a, f- uh, yeah, a fair few other things out there, but that would be probably the one that I'd recommend to check out. Cool. And then, um, I mean, I'm next week I will be heading off to Gamescom, uh, the European gaming conference, um, to find out what's going on there. Um, it's actually, I mean, E3 is the big deal, um, so we're kind of keeping our keeping our ear to the ground for some of the more exciting launches at Gamescom, so do keep your eye on that. Um, and following that, then there will be IFA. Um, which should be an exciting time for tech launches. And at the end of September, we'll be doing Paris Motor Show. So plenty of... Also known as the beginning of October. The beginning of October. <laughs> well, the end of September is the beginning of October. <laughs> We're literally going in October. <laughs> oh, is it? I thought we went... Oh, okay. We go in October 1st. I need an assistant to, to sort out my, my schedules. Um, yes, so keep your eyes on CNET for that. You can email the podcast with cnetukpodcast at cbsi.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram with at BatteryHQ. And you can do the same with Drew with... At Drew Stern. Stern is spelled S-T-E-A-R-N-E. Well done for spelling your own name right. That's yeah, good. You've it, learned. Yeah, it's, it's... And people, if you had to guess it, no one would guess it right. It's a weird spelling. That's probably how I'd spell it. Yeah, but that's because you've known me for like 10 years. That's Maybe, maybe that is part of it. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, Drew. And um, we will hopefully be back with an episode in two weeks' time, um, but which will probably be our pre efa show. Um, or I pre efa pre efa show, which I won't be here for, but hopefully I can hand the reins over to Rich and Katie, who will be able to take you through everything you need to know about the upcoming tech show. Uh, for now, Drew, I think it's time to end. So thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all next time. 